happy birthday as well. You always find the latest courtyard. And in solution, Kate. In out of the box. Hello and welcome to Radio Waves by Todd Ebert. If you enjoy reviews, comparisons, band scans of new and classic portable radios, then make sure to subscribe and tap the bell icon so you don't miss any of my most excellent videos. In front of us, we have the Iron Snow. This is an AM FM weather band emergency radio, model number IR101. You can find these retailing on Amazon for right around $29.99. May or may not have a coupon. I'll have links below so you can check it out. Really unique design. Thought it'd be interesting to pick it up. So let's see what the box looks like. Right up close here. Got a cool futuristic look to it. Got some bullet points on the side. Solar crank radio. Okay. Edge. Technical parameters. There you go. Some millimeter dimensions. Some weight. Max power. Okay, there you go. Battery capacity, 4,000 milliamp hour. Nice. Okay, I think that's it. Took everything out of the box. To make it easy, we'll see what we get. Toss the box aside. We get the star of the show. I like the looks of it. I think it's pretty cool. Uh, there you go, the IR101. You get a charging cable, which is a USB to Type-C. like to see that. Seems like all future radios now are including these type of connections, which is beautiful because in the dark, it can go either way, which is fantastic. So you get that, and you get the manual. Yay! <laughs> For posterity, we'll open it up. There you can see main functions. Okay. Yeah, there. The 4,000 milliamp hour power bank feature is pretty cool. I tested it, and it is what it is. It is close to 4,000. Ah, definitely nice. There you go. How to use the radio, flashlight, some of the features, which we'll cover. This opens up on a big sheet here. Actually, let's flip it over. And you can see here we have an SOS feature, a little mini solar panel, which I don't know if it's any good or not. Uh, probably just enough power to light the LED. <laughs> I mean, I'll show you a proper solar panel and, yeah, compare it to that one. And there's your technical parameters again. And we're done pretty much with these directions because the inside, I believe, is blank. Yep, nothing on the inside. All right. Set the stuff aside here. Let's look at the radio. Cool. IR101. I like the company, Iron Snow. They make some really cool stuff. One of my favorites, the FS089. Uh, Don't know if they still make that radio, but that was a cool radio. Um, yeah, amazing. Uh, but here it is dimension-wise for the 101 here. We have a width of 3 and 5 eighths of an inch. We have a height of 6 and a quarter inches. We have a depth of just under 2 inches at 1 and 7 eighths of an inch going across there. Little size comparison. I'll bring this back up because I do have some bigger radios I want to show this time. So let's compare it to a modern high-end emergency radio. Here we go. CC Radio Solar by Seacrane. There you are. A little difference in price. We get a $30 radio versus a $100 radio. But as you'll quickly see, the solar panel on the CC Radio Solar is much larger. And they say in their manual that this large solar panel is just enough to keep the lithium battery topped off. And their lithium battery isn't as large as what they're using in here. So I'll uh, just put it in perspective, um, the little solar panel on top here, like I say, isn't going to be as effective as that is. So, but there you go, size comparison. Okay, cool. It's a little brick there, love that. Um, usual, uh, a lot of C-Cream products here. I'm a fan, as you can tell. CC Pocket, little AM, FM, weather band radio. <laughs> I love this for size. I think it's fantastic to give you an idea. That's a pocket radio. Um, time is 11.10. That's Central Standard Time. I'm near Chicago, Illinois, USA, if we do any tuning on the bands. I don't know how much we'll get done with tuning, but we'll see. Here we have the CC Skywave, little shortwave radio, weather alert as well. Always nice to have. And then last but not least, we have a deck of cards in case you don't have these radios. There you are. Yeah, I love the flashlight at the bottom of this thing. So we're going to be able to go to features here in a second, but really awesome. Iron Man, he's the man with the master plan. He loves emergency radios from Iron Snowland. Iron Man. <laughs> it never gets old for me. 
<laughs> might for you. I love it. Okay. I'm an Iron Man fan, as you guys know. All right. So let's go ahead and zoom it back down. Let's go features of the IR-101. Okay. So looking at the radio, as you can see, there's two different types of plastics. We got the hard plastic and we got soft touch plastics. A lot of people don't like soft touch plastics. This one here actually shows fingerprints really easily. Um, this probably will get sticky, but the bonus is it's on the outside edges. It's black, so you could probably just run some alcohol on there when it becomes sticky, and it'll probably come right off without hurting the radio. So, yeah, it's only on the edges, which is nice. So, left-hand side, we got the volume on-off control. We have a light mode switch. Actuates our three LED lights on the bottom. And those, uh, I believe it, it said half watt each. And uh, yeah, so you got three of them and they produce kind of a bluish white light. Show you that. You know, it's cool. Just enough light so you can find a real flashlight, you know. You know what I'm talking about. <laughs> but uh, there you go. Not bad. I mean, yeah, it should last quite a while. Like in that. Nice. Going to the front of the radio. We'll start at the top, our dial. The weather band. Uh, we got the kind of in reverse here. Channel 7 going to channel 1. FM 87 to 108 and AM 520 to 1710. We have a charge status indicator. As you can see, it's lighting up red from the solar panel. There you are. A green LED will light up here when the radio is in tune. You'll get to see that. Here we have a band select switch, FM AM weather band. Four little LEDs for battery level status. Uh, these aren't very accurate at all. When I was using the power bank feature, I'd plug something in, instantly it would drop 25%, even though it was fully charged. <laughs> instantly. And then it would like drop really quick again, and then it would go to 25%, and it would stay at 25% for probably two thirds of the capacity of the radio. So you're really not gonna know how much charge you have. So if you get down to a one bar, um, just charge it just to be on the safe side. But yeah, to be honest with you, you'll probably have at least more than half capacity left when it hits 25%. That's what I noticed. Um, but here nor there, they could have probably not used that. Maybe something more simple, like one LED, <laughs> where it just flashes red telling you time to charge. So anyway, my, an idea. So here's a speaker, uh, rather tinny sounding, one and a half inch. Bottom here, we have an SOS, so it'll flash the lights and do a siren. Pretty loud here. Press and hold. <coughs> Quick press, turn it off. There you go. Nice and loud. And of course, these battery LED lights come on every time, and I'll talk about these because they do affect certain reception on this radio. Yeah, fun. Um, right hand side, we have the tuning wheel. So we can, you see, you got a white dial indicator there. Okay, simple analog style DSP radio, digital signal processor. This is a USB meter uh, symbol there. Behind here, we have a rubber jacket. And we'll see our ports. We have a Type-C input, 5 volts, 1 amp. Yep, it charges at 1 amp, so it takes 4 hours to charge. And over here, we have our output, 5 volts at 1 amp. So pretty basic output. Now, I delivered. Uh, I delivered. I tested it and watched it deliver a total of 2,430 one milliamp hours, 2,431. That's 11.84 watt hours. So not bad. And uh, yeah, it charges pretty well. Let's uh, bring out a little tester here, do a little test to show you how that works. So plug it in, meter pops up. So yeah, I want to charge my flashlight. So hooked up the flashlight to the meter here. Off we go. I guess I'll just top out at a one amp here. Flashlight is charging. You can see the little red LED there. And of course our numbers. Now this flashlight's really pulling. So it's pulling way past <laughs> specs. So this is 1.35 amps, 4.59 volts. Now if you're charging something uh, not as heavy duty, um, let's see if we can find something on the desk that's not so heavy duty. Um, Let's say you want to charge up your favorite little shortwave radio. You got Andy. Let's see, I got a, a Radio Wow R108. Let's charge that up. It's always fun. So if I got a cable hiding out here that I can use. Just looking through my collection. Should have something over here. I have many cables. I have a mini USB. There you go. 
and I had, there we go, micro. So as you can see, this thing's fully charged. It dropped the two bars with it just plugged in. <laughs> yeah, it's just not accurate, those lights. So of course it turned off, and of course I can unplug this probably, and plug it back in. This is just to show you the power bank feature. But it does fairly well. I was pretty impressed to get those numbers. Did not expect that when I saw those lights dropping so fast. So we got to find the charging port here for the radio. Wow. It's a good companion radio to this because there's a small battery in here. And this will show you that on a uh, low draw device, you can see it's 5 volts. And it's like we're running 4 tenths of an amp, so we're not over, over uh, utilizing it like we did with the flashlight. This is just pulling a little bit too much power. But there you go, charging away. Cool. <laughs> All right. We'll turn the radio on in a moment here. We just go through the charge features, which people are going to want to know. It's just enough power to get your phone charged to a decent limit. That way you can get text out. They always say use text instead of making a voice call. All right, in an emergency. So tuning wheel showed that to us. Saw the little mini um, solar panel, nothing spectacular. The antenna, watch out. Wait for it, seven inches. Yeah, that's a weak point as well. Unfortunately, it's only seven inches. It does affect FM reception, but does pivot 360, which is beautiful. Look at that. Something like futuristic, isn't it? <laughs> it's pretty awesome. Go okay, push it in for now. On the back here, we have our dynamo power generator, they're calling it. This is nice. Best feature of the whole radio. Pop this open, and the grip is perfect. Left hand, I'm right handed, and spin away. And I think it was, uh, yeah, 150 RPM. <laughs> Um, and I think you get like, if you do that for a minute, you get like 15 minutes of light and five minutes of radio. I always think that's reversed. I think it should be 15 minutes of radio and five minutes of light. That's just me. But that's what the instructions said. But yeah, there you go. And of course the red light was, um, but I'm not going to try to show you all. Cranking away there on that dynamo. So I showed you the flashlight, carry lanyard, nice. Cool to have those things. And uh, yeah, I think we covered pretty much all the options. As you can see, there is no external battery bay. There's no way to put dry batteries in it. And there's no way to access the internal batteries. Uh, it should have two 18650s rated at 2,000 milliamp hour each. Um, I haven't opened up to verify, but they show a picture uh, on their listing of two single batteries side by side. So just something to throw out there for you guys. Um, yeah, what else can I talk about? Yeah, so this thing has an issue when you turn it on. Let's just turn it on. If you're on the AM band and you turn it on. You're greeted with wonderful noise. Yes. I've had this on a radio before. Um, unfortunately, uh, the power bank circuit is killing the AM reception. Now, this, these lights stay on for 45 seconds. Uh, and so you got to wait around for that. Now, on the weather band... It will not be affected or FM, so you can still tune in with those lights on. Now, if you notice, I just bumped the power button and my radio went away. If that happens, just turn it off, turn it back on, and keep doing that to see if it comes back on. Chance of rain there we go. In the morning. Waves five to That'll only happen to you if you turn the radio off while these lights are on. If the lights are off and you turn the radio on, you'll be okay. Waves four to seven feet, occasionally to nine feet. Thursday, south winds to 30. So here's our weather band. We'll go ahead and pull the antenna up. Chance of showers. Waves four to seven feet, occasionally. We'll go through the weather band here real quick. Day night, south winds 15 to 25 knots. Chance of showers. Now during the day, I picked up about four stations, which is average because of this tiny little antenna. Cloudy. 
So as you can see, I can pick out three downstairs here. Ten miles an hour. Okay. Please so three to five feet building to four to seven. There you go. Uh, what we're going to do here next, uh, we're going to do uh, audio demonstration uh, with this radio, and I'm going to talk about FM reception. So FM reception, let's go right there. So we're on FM. Um, you could expect uh, an okay to good rating. So what I rated on is fair, okay, good, very good, excellent. And a typical radio, old school, such as like this GE, I always keep handy and I use as a display. This guy here, he gets get an okay to good rating. It found about 48 stations on its analog dial uh, during daytime. Um, but this radio here, unfortunately, suffers from that really tiny antenna. Uh, and I was only able to find uh, 42 stations in my area, giving it an okay to good rating on sensitivity. Selectivity wasn't that great, so I gave it just an okay rating on that. So it's a sub-average FM receiver, just enough you can get enough strong stations to be usable, but it's not a DX type radio. It's just for an emergency use only. Definitely use it for the weather band and maybe some strong stations. So what we're going to do here is we're going to tune in Radio Totterbert, which is my FM transmitter right here, transmitting at 97.7. .7. And I have a little MP3 player playing some royalty-free music here. As you can see, we'll go ahead and we'll play these. And you get to hear what's going on. Move that stuff out of the way. All right, so let's see if we can find that. There we go. Good idea what the speaker sounds like. Seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. You'll never have the sacred stone. <laughs> Oh, 
There you go, get an idea how that works. We'll just pause that, we'll turn off the transmitter, and let's uh, do a quick FM band scan. Yeah, so we'll go to the bottom of the band, so we can pick up, and then we'll go to the AM band, so we can hear there. Uh, AM band's pretty much good for locals only. So we'll zip this to the bottom. And like I said, we're downstairs with this little antenna. So you know what I'm gonna do? Uh, otherwise, we'll probably pick up one or two stations, is I'm gonna hook up a external wire here. Let's get unwrap it. Here we go. And we'll see what we can pick up downstairs. Probably should just put this in since we're using the little clip. Okay, that'll help us. This little 12 foot wire that goes to my window so we can pick up anything. You gotta go slow. I do like these controls, how they're recessed. It's kind of a unique design. Less than 2%, that's all. Their intake of unlifteds is less than 2%. But you're... 6 a.m. right here on Calvary Radio. Feeding the sheep in bloom. our fm band it uh, sounds pretty good doesn't it yeah not bad at all okay so we're gonna go ahead and oh shoot <laughs> all right we're gonna turn the radio off turn it back on on fm here we're gonna disconnect this now we gotta wait 45 seconds for those lights to go off before we get any kind of am reception but now the radio is not working so what we have to do is turn the radio off there we go We're going to go down the band. Now, during the day, it was great for locals mainly. Got a couple semi-locals. Not really good for distant listening, but for locals, it's all you really need in an emergency. So let's go ahead and tune the band real quick. You'll see me moving the radio. It utilizes an internal antenna, of course, to pick up the AM band. 
I'm near Chicago, USA, Illinois, and of course our time is 11.31 Central Standard Time, PM. So we're picking up evening stations. Having no experience, what is the expectation? Is it a good move for Jeff Saturday to get this job? And does it even matter? I think we're right at the 670. <laughs> You're not going anywhere. We'll talk more Monday Night Football. We'll talk to you. We got a lot to do. It's the JR Sport. Sports Radio right now. Are the Ravens? As you can see, it's only good for strong vocals. Might find some faint stations with some patience. For 93 yards and two scores. All into the upper 30s in the afternoon. Right now, some clouds out there. It's 45 degrees. 720 WGN Chicago. You're serving Chicago. I'm James Sears on Chicago's very own 720 WGN. Every game is a challenge, but the best way out is always through. A law enforcement official. See if I can pick up 740. Nothing. Back you up. HD stand. Just jumps right to 780. The CBS correspondent Jeff Begays has more. With the potential for violence hanging over. So here's 780 WBBM Chicago. They have old-time radio in the evenings, Monday through Friday, um, from uh, 12 a.m. to 1 a.m. Central Standard Time. So check it out. Ah. So you bump that volume. And now we've got the power meter. So, yeah, it is, it's kind of annoying. Um, it's mainly, on, like I said, the AM band. Where it's an issue. Weather band's fine. You're listening to NOAA Weather Radio, KXI 41, serving the north and northwest suburbs, including Woodstock, Libertyville, and Elgin. The current time is 11.34 p.m. Central Standard Time. Now here is the hazardous weather outlook for portions of north central Illinois, northeast Illinois, and northwest Indiana. Oh, on CNN's AC360, Pelosi said her husband was struck twice in the head with a hammer. Finish this band scan up, and then I'll uh, go to final thoughts. England and the, the mistake the quarterback made. And... Uh, about with, uh... I think that was the ESPN 1000, WMVP, Chicago. I'm really not picking up much here. Okay, that's the AM band in a nutshell. So, um, yeah, unfortunately, um, if you have it on the AM band, turn it on. Um, of course, you got to do it when the lights are off. <laughs> um, it has that 45-second delay of, of static from these battery LEDs. Now, if these didn't turn on and you could just hit a button to get status, that would be the way to do it, not have it come on and make a bunch of noise. So they need to redesign uh, that, that aspect of this radio. Um, they also need to add a uh, battery compartment where you can re change out those lithium batteries. Or if you can't change those out, add some dry battery base. I mean, 
too many emergency radios in this price range have that. Now this is unique because it's cool styling. It'd be fun for a teenager to get. Uh, they aren't going to care about the AM band like I do. <laughs> They're just going to want to know what the weather is going on. Um, so now we turn this on. Then we got our 45 seconds of static. If you want to listen to that, switch your band to the weather band. Tune your favorite wet weather station in. Lows in the mid 40s. Veterans Day, partly sunny in the morning, then clearing. Or your favorite FM station. Hey, I've been, I've been thinking, I want you. So there you go. <laughs> uh, and those lights aren't a big deal. So there it is. The. Iron Snow uh, IR101. Uh, is it a buy at $30? Eh, for me, I don't know. It, it's got to be more of like one of those things where like a young guy likes it. Um, but for the average person, um, $30 you can buy. There's so many different ones out there. Um, you're going to want to look into some other options uh, at that price range. If this goes on sale, say for $20 or under, might consider it because it does have a 4,000 milliamp hour uh, capacity, which is above average. Um, that's nice. Uh, it does do well as a power bank uh, feature. I like that. Uh, it does tune in to no weather man halfway decent, even with a short antenna. <laughs> um, and it does FM okay. So it, overall, you know, and you get this nice flashlight set up. I mean, I got to bring that to your attention. It's not a bad flashlight. You know, you don't need reading lamps. You just need a flashlight. And those work out pretty well. SOS is loud enough to get noticed. They can probably get rid of the solar panel. Don't really need that. I think so small, it's not going to do much um, at all. So power generator, I do like that. So overall, it gets a maybe recommendation, $20 or under. Um, if it's any higher, I probably wouldn't recommend it. That's just my opinion. Um, yours may differ. Uh, that's kind of how I feel about this radio, especially with the noisy AM band. Um, yeah, <laughs> it's just how it is. And uh, so, yeah, if you like the video, give me a big like. Uh, it, please, because <laughs> I've educated you. Uh, two, uh, if you like inexpensive emergency radios and want to see more, subscribe at the bell icon, get notified of future radios. And of course, three, comment below what you think about the Iron Snow IR101 um, as a demonstration. Did it kind of cover everything you need to know about this radio? And what do you think? Let me know. All right, guys, thanks for watching, and we'll see you in my next video.